is chilling. What more can I say? Top villain. What's up, everybody? This your man, Bill Bellamy, and you know what it is. We're here. Top billing coming to you from Hollywood, California. Number one podcast for the culture, the movement, and the discussion. It is an honor to have two special guests today. Sometimes you got to double up. Sometimes you got to bring all your friends in and, and, and kick it. We have a fantastic film that will be dropping this Friday called Fear Psychological Thriller, and I felt it would be top billing to bring in the director, Deion Taylor, and the lead of the movie, Mr. Joseph Sakura, a.k.a. Tommy, a.k.a. Bad Boy. What's up? What's good, man? What? what? Oh my God, man. I'm so happy that you guys have a project like this. You know what I'm saying? Where people are going to go on a ride. They're going to be surprised. They're going to be scared. I mean, the, 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 the movie is fear. Dion, tell me what made you grab this and say, I'm going to make it happen. Man, it was um, you know. We sit up, yeah, get on yeah. the mic. You, you ain't you ain't in trouble. You can talk. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he had like he in the back of the class, like yo, man. The teacher told me yeah, I can't I'm talk in class. Here. Go ahead, no, we good. You know what, man? We we um a couple years ago, man. Right right during the uh, height of the pandemic, yes. Um, you know the world had shut down, and I just had this idea, man. I was just feeling like my whole life was being consumed by fear. Correct. Uh, we were scared to go outside. I was, you know, scared for my family at the time, man. I was wondering, like, could I beat this thing if I got it? And right at that moment was the George Floyd moment. Yes. And then it was just all civil unrest everywhere. Correct. So then you had this 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 airborne thing, and then you had this thing going. And it was the first time in my life I was like, yo, I could see how the world would end. And uh, during that time, man, I just came with an idea, like, man, like, how fear just keeps grabbing us and haunting us in some type of way. I was like, I wonder if I could write something or put something together around this way I'm that feeling. That feeling. Yeah, and I did. And uh, I remember vividly, like it was yesterday, man, uh, I called Joe. He mm-hmm. was in New York, and I said, I got an idea for a movie. He was like, what? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the world just shut down, dude. Yeah, the world just shut down. no more movies. <laughs> I was like, man, we can go up here. It's like near Tahoe. It's only like 10 cases. And I was right. like, man, we could just shoot this thing in this in this big old cabin. And he was like, pitch it to me. And I pitched it to him. And next thing I know, he was in the car drive from New York. Did the same thing with T.I. Uh, did the same thing with King Batch. And yeah. everybody was like, damn, that sounds good, man. I said, come on, let's do it. Because it is good, man. man listen, hey, hey, we didn't we know been... how crazy we were, man. We was crazy as hell, man. So you yeah. so you guys are literally isolated. You go to the middle of uh, Lake Tahoe. Ain't nobody up there but y'all and shoot your own movie. Shoot the whole movie, man. And, but That's absolutely Bill, originally it was supposed to be an iPhone. I was like, oh, I'm going to just shoot it with like the phone, like a phone or either a small camera. Like some Blair Witch shit. Yeah, and then I ended up calling like Chris Duskin, a big cinematographer. I called everybody. and uh, we They and, wasn't working. No, That's right. Nobody was working. <laughs> so they, they, was free, they was free. That was free. <laughs> <laughs> you could have called me. I would have been. I would have picked up on the first ring. I'm telling you, that was a weird time. I, I'm glad that you uh, grabbed a project that can um, sort of be like a uh, barometer for a moment in our lives because, uh, you know, all of us had different versions of that of that. That snapshot. That's right. right. You know, not knowing if we would uh, go back to shooting TV, not knowing if I would go on the road again, or what if I get it on the plane, you know, I'm flying and stuff. There were so many different scenarios that was playing in my head just in my regular life. And then you are able to put that kind of element in a thriller and make it a ride is crazy. No, man, it's it's, it's, the the idea for this is Mm -hmm. as artists, we are supposed to create moments and snapshots of the time that we live in. Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's exactly what it was. Yeah, out of the confusion, out of the fear, comes the idea of um, togetherness and mm. comes the idea of friendship and trust and all of these things can trump fear. And it's really getting beyond the fear. And for better or for worse, our film is set basically in what is today. Like it's coming out in real time. Absolutely. Dion kind of predicted the future of like this COVID thing, this this... Even the bigger concept of being manipulated into fear and, and, and that everybody is has not gone away. It's still here right now. So as soon as when you see the film, as soon as the, the opening <clears> credits <throat> come in and we're in it, it's gonna you're gonna be like, Well, this is today. You know, no, no, it's right this second. Right this second, <laughs> right now. <laughs> and and here's the thing that's uh, I find to be really uh wonderful about you, Joseph, is that you are doing different types of characters, right? You know, because sometimes, you know, when you become so attached to a, a, a one character that every 
everybody loves. It can kind of like lock you in. Yo, you step it out. You stepping out the box on this and you just you feel different. It's fly. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're charming. And you, you got a lot of a lot of levels to this character. I appreciate that. I got to give Dion a lot of credit for that, too, mm-hmm. because just like um, Jason Bateman should get so much of the credit for the Frank Jr. role on Ozark Correct. being so different than the Tommy uh, from Power character is that uh, you sometimes you you have to trust. You got to go beyond your own ego saying, I know what's up. I know what's up. This is a collective game. We're all in it together. And Dion demanded that I go even further than that. Absolutely. Dion developed this character really for me in a way that we made him at first. It was a film writer. But then we, it, it's, it's I love history. Right. So Dion made it a guy who writes historical novels. That was good. Uh, you know, that was, and, that was absolutely good. it was great. So we kind of came so up. So it just and, got you yeah. in it. You he walk got, right into it. It's it, it, parts of me are really in this. Just the parts of me are in Tommy. Very different parts are of me are in Ram. And and it takes somebody like Dion that believes in you that says, no, no, you can't do that. In fact, I demand you do something different. I demand you go further. I demand to pull that out of you. And those are the kind of people you want in your life who believe in you so much they demand something different. So, Dion, you, you right now, when I look over your uh, body of work, you have seen, you seem to have been able to really put your signature on suspense and thrillers. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you. So yeah. you, you just is you crazy? You're like, do you just like? <laughs> are you like lightweight? Because I'm like, yo, you be, you got this yes. shit down. So you might be a little crazy. weird or something. You know, you look regular, but you might be a crazy motherfucker. No, like, what's going no. on? No, you know what's crazy, man, is um, when I first started, I I I, I jumped genres, right. and that's not normal for black filmmakers. Um, when I first started out, they thought I was crazy because they like you trying to do. At, when I first started, I cut my teeth in horror. So a little bit of that was like me going around the rooms at the time when blacks weren't really doing horror. Correct. And uh, one of the first people I met was Mark Berg. That's funny mm-hmm. he's talking about that. <laughs> and Because um, I was a big Saw fan. Yes, that's um, that franchise was huge. Shout out to Mark Berg. Shout out to Mark, man, who uh, also produced with me and Roxanne the Intruder. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, um, yeah, man, I, I um, it took me a long time as an independent filmmaker to just go do what I do for people to accept these are the movies that I make. And, um, and you're doing a, you're doing a fantastic job of it, you. man. I, and I like how you were able to get like your cast together. They're like it's eclectic. It's people um, that we know, but we don't actually imagine seeing them together. No, it's crazy. That's, That's what's a great point. Cool. That's a great point. You it know is, what I mean? It is because because it's kind of like the model that I wanted to build, right? Okay. So if you think about the intruder, is Joe, Mike, Ely, Megan, and Dennis Quaid. Mm-hmm. Think about Black and Blue. Is Tyrese. Greece. Right, Naomi, Naomi Harris and Frank Grillo. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And even uh, Meet the Blacks. Like, that was really fun, putting all those people together as well. But, yeah, Fear is the same thing. Traffic was the same thing. Omar Epps and Paula Patton. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like blending people and, and, and creating a world with the actors that I really like. With Fear um, being the main character of your film, um, how do you want people to feel? Like, if you, if there were a way to describe how you want people to feel when they're in the theater? Because I'm a big movie guy. Like, I love going to movies. Like, before I was ever in a movie, I used to go to movies all, like damn near every other week, you know, right. to see something. So, what 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 kind of uh, feeling do you want people to have? I want you to feel. Um, mm-hmm. I want you to just have a moment where you rem- remember and also understand the moment that we're in now. Right. See, fear. What's interesting about it is everyone has a fear. And the reality of fear is if you allow fear to continue to be around you or hunt you, it will stop you. So fear has the power to kill you metaphysically and physically. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about this. People live their whole lives scared to get a divorce, scared to get married, scared to leave that job, scared Mm -hmm. to try that one thing they wanted to try, scared to open that business, scared to invest in. We live every day in fear. And I was like, man, if we could just understand how to detach from that and live in a different type of freedom, then we could be better people. My whole life was based in fear before I decided to say to myself, I'm going to go do this as a filmmaker. And most times as African-Americans, mm-hmm. we're kind of always locked in a box. Like, when you get ready to go try something new, everybody's like, oh, you finna do that? No, yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what you mean you finna do that? And I remember I was, like, playing hoop, and I'm like, man, I'm finna go try to do film. You ain't finna do no film. Like, and you just be like, man, most times people put themselves right back in place. Yeah, but you, you to, gotta fight through you it. Gotta, just think, man, you play, play ball, do whatever you're doing. You're like, man, I'm finna be a comedian. It didn't and how make many no people? Sense. How many people was like you finna be a what? So you, gotta, you know what I mean? So you gotta you gotta understand that's fear. Or 
like Tip was just saying recently, man, people will project their fears onto you. Absolutely. Right? Because they never tried, because they never wanted it, because they never thought they could do it. They tell you, you can't do it. Yeah. So the movie, what I want you to take from it is, I just want you to remember a moment in time. I want you to remember what we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. There's a scene in the film that's so cold, man. Someone, someone coughs, and everybody goes... <laughs> We all did that. Remember and when people I'm didn't like, want to cough during COVID? Like, even yeah, on the air? You had to like, cough yeah, instantly. I forget, was it Steph Curry? Like, it was like getting an interview, and he's just like. Yeah, yeah like, 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 like we yeah. wasn't coughing, and that's so crazy. You say, I got a joke about that, too. Like, like the cough got to be, it's a different it's type crazy. of cough. It's crazy. Like, it can't be weird. It's got to no. be. <clears throat> but that, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like the cough that's limit real. right there. That's that real. one, like, you know, he ain't sick. He just got something in his throat. If it go past that, <laughs> now Cash is like, yo, my man, ease up. That's Yo, my man, you all right? Or, you or, you, or, you all, or, everybody, or everybody takes a moment, you know what yeah. I mean? So what's crazy is this is just a, a really dope moment we had doing with filming. King Batch is shooting this scene. Andrew Batch is shooting this scene. And uh, we have this moment where they're doing these uh, wine glasses. Now, remember, everybody there is there because they believe in what I'm trying to pitch them. And Joe's there. We're all there doing this film. Correct. But they are scared to death. At it's, the same time. At the same time. So... Just to jump off a little bit, when you watch the movie, which you will see, those scenes where everyone's performing and they're actually in, like, feel like there's intense moments and they're in fear, they really are. Because every scene, when we would break, there would be one or two actors would be like, hey, man, you think I should get tested? <laughs> because because everybody was so close. We were so close. And Dion would be running into the room, no. this is no joke, with a can of Lysol. And people are like, stop it. The idea is like, no, this kills it. Look. Yeah. And he was so real. so, so we, we would know. have these moments where, you know, you have a young actress who's like, yo, I'm here because I want to be in the movie. But, but I don't want to die. But I don't want to die. Right, so right, anyways, right, right. there's this moment where uh, Andrew Bachelor, they drink this wine and he throws up. And he throws up literally like, right? And, and I jump back like, oh, man, like, I'm, my instincts was, is he okay? Right. I look. The camera operator drops a Sony Venice camera. Boom. So we turn, and he's walking out. And the other camera, and I'm going like, hey, what's wrong? How do you know we're not sick right now? Oh, how do you God. know? How do you know we're here? I mean, it was like a whole. It was intense. Oh, man, it was like, it was like. It was the first time just as an owner of a film and a producer and a director right. and a writer where I was like, wow. This was 57, 58-year-old man. I, I was like, oh, I have to understand this man is trusting me with his life in this moment. In this moment. Yeah, that's right? a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yes, so, sir. So that's how intense it was yeah. on set shooting the movie. That's and, why uh, That's yeah. why I think this movie is going to be a, a really, really uh, successful situation because it's going to make people relate in such a way that they would never think. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you capture this emotion in real time and it's still going on, like Joseph said, and it's like, yo, are we going to be able to manage it, though? Because yeah. it's, it's a lot of pressure to when you're afraid. You yeah. know, I remember... Um, you know, when I was traveling, uh, doing stand up during uh, COVID and I, I couldn't go to many states or whatever. And uh, I went to Florida and Florida was wide open. Yeah. Like it, COVID never happened. <laughs> I think I saw Joseph on the beach. So, <laughs> Joseph's like, B, you good. Don't worry about yeah, it. Right, man. Yeah, COVID is, uh, is, is somewhere crazy. else. Florida but, was wide no, open. Florida was wide open. There was a couple states that just, just didn't, didn't care. Didn't care, right? And I'm like, yo, am I going to get sick? And if I get sick, can I get back home? I know exactly what you're talking about because you run. It's almost like you're running a fear uh, movie in your head yep. of different scenarios yep. that you're like, whoa, okay, that that lady just I shook my man's hand. Can I shake his hand? And then I then I'd be like, okay, let me wash my hands real quick. Like it was crazy. Yeah, that's real. No, this is, what we're describing right now. We've never had in our entire life. Yeah, we the world stopped. Yes. So I'm trying to explain to my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know who's eighteen or was fifteen at the time? I'm like they're and the kid, they're like I'm like the world stopped. You've never seen the world stop. Yeah, ever. I mean, everything stopped. No planes in the sky for nothing. A so I'm going like, man, this is real. Now I'll, I'll tell you this: I never got, I never ever got COVID. Around the, when it started easing up, I remember I got, I was so safe, even with the movie. We had no nothing. Right. 
Zero positive Because it ain't no COVID out where y'all was. Y'all was so but goddamn you, far, Dion. No. The, the CDC, <laughs> right. this is the first time that they ever made rules for a movie. It was our film. We were testing your nose, and drive, a driver would take the test, get in the car, and drive, drive to L.A. To LA from, from, from Tahoe. Yeah. Every day. When he gets there, there's another driver waiting to take the results and drive back. And oh, then, snap. So we were testing three times a day, and that was how. And then at 12 o'clock, we would get the results. We would wait on the radio. Yeah, yeah. And someone would say, You're clear. You're clear. And we. You get, still in the movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't Yo, that crazy? Still, and Yo, this that, is the old test. So this, the whole, is, this is the one that tickled your brain. With the, the one that they went up in your... Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy I got rid of that test. <laughs> but let me tell you what I was going to tell you. So I was going to tell you that. I ended up coming out here to L.A. one day mm. with my boy Omar who's from New York. We was driving in the car. His boy had came out here. And I was like, oh, all right, with y'all hopped in the car. Didn't think nothing of it. Laughing. We didn't escape this for a year. I got in the house. The next day... You I'm like, man, so I feel a little weird. Don't think none of it. Fly home. He calls my phone and says, man, dude, you're never going to believe this. I got COVID. <laughs> so I'm like, you should go test yourself. So I'm like, I don't know if I got that. Bro, when I tell you the five hours later, I went, I went down. I'm, I always try to explain the story to people like, I feel like I'm a really healthy person. I play hoop. I run. Right. I you walk, do everything I you're do. supposed to do. When I tell you, man, I was, I didn't even know what day it was. So when I think about that moment, it was like a week and a half for me where I was like, <clears throat> I can't even move. And then I watched this film and I'm going like, man, like I could only imagine if I wasn't what I was. And I understood now why we lost so many people. Yeah, because you know it, I mean? it was it was serious. Yeah, because they're not as healthy as you are mm-hmm. or you are. They're not they're not doing those things. Everybody in the world is not healthy. So something like that to wipe you right out. I mean, I, it took me down, and I was, and I'm a tough dude. I'm like, yo, I'm. This is not good, man. Yeah. So when you think about how many people, you know, that we lost to this thing, that we're still trying to understand, and people also oh, conspiracy. I said, man, I don't care what you said, it. I got it. Right. <laughs> so I know it's I real, know it's, it's and the real. blessing yeah. that you were able to not only be co- courageous enough to make your film during it, but everybody was good. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got it done. That's a, that was a this dude, That's man, a miracle, well, bro. It was it was a lot of testament to Joe because yes. for him to get in the car and drive down and be the first to be like, I'm in. That's gangster. And be all in so everybody else can see. I'm, exactly I'm 100% right. and I'm not questioning anything. Right. We're yeah. going to do this movie. We're going to finish it. Dion is the man. That's our leader. And people do often look to you like, is he doing it? He's doing it. Uh, then it's, yeah, it might yeah, be all right. We'll keep on doing it. Right. It's a real deal, man. I mean, honestly. How long did it take you guys to knock fear out? 15 days. 15, 16 days, yeah. Yep. Intense. Joe, Joe broke his knee on set. Yeah, broke my kneecap. Hot. Can you please explain I me was how doing, you working? <laughs> yeah, I was used to doing hit classes on my mats, and then I was doing those jump squats, and then I hit my kneecap. I didn't know that it was broken at the time. So did you hear that? Oh, I did, and then I decided that a five mile hike up the mountains would be a good oh, idea. Oh, let's life. keep it going. Let's let keep me it just, going. Just, let me just do that. And then I, you know, I couldn't sleep, and I'm screaming. We broke Tommy's knee. Yeah. I'm like, damn, <laughs> we broke Tommy's knee. And then Dion had me. Uh, he had uh, luckily he had some prescription Motrin. Yes, that, sir. Like I just I portioned that out. We and, keep that. Uh, uh, no, but thank God. Have that. But thank God yep. because I wouldn't have been able to finish the film. Like there were times that you see some of the behind the scenes pictures of me with a cane yeah, talking crazy. to Dion. So when you bro- when you break your kneecap. Because I remember Kyrie did something like that where he broke his kneecap. So is it is it detached? Is it the tendons around? My, it? No, no. My tendon stayed intact. It was cra- it cracked at a centripetal point, and then it was broken in uh, three different little places. Okay. That was a really nice word he threw in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what the hell that meant, but I was impressed. I got more Was you impressed about that? That was a very <laughs> centrifugal. Centripetal. That's a T-I word. <laughs> <laughs> you dig? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how did you uh, go about getting you know all the guys you you reach out to Joseph and then you and then you go to Batch you you get you get Terrence oh, J yeah. you get Till like how did y'all because it's just a dope cast yeah I, like, I was so happy I was there when he, when Ruby Modine came through because he was so happy about getting Ruby him. Modine yeah and you got Matthew's daughter in there, there Matthew is a good guy he, he uh, we did uh, any given Sunday together yeah. He's, Man, Fantastic one guy. One of the best, man. Yeah, it was just phone calls. As a matter of fact, this is a crazy story. I shouldn't even tell this. <laughs> you can't. Um, we Only were, on we, top billing people. Yeah, I'll just say a little bit of it. But, so T.I., 
we were like, like I was trying to get tip, but he was like, I don't know what he was doing during the pandemic, but I couldn't get him on the phone. <laughs> right, yeah. So I'm like, I he was busy somehow. I can't catch tip. So I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So we was trying to figure out how to how to get someone that was like equal value, but also could 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 act. Give me some. What I wanted to do in the movie, which he did really well, I wanted someone that you knew, thought you knew, but you never seen him like this. So. T.I.'s character in this film, Lou, is really good. When you see his, his body's perform- this role, he's when, so good. When in the you film. see his performance, you're gonna be like, okay, that's not T.I. That's somebody else. Right. We call Snoop. Snoop gets on the phone, uh-huh. and I'm like pitching him the thing. Me and Joe send a video <laughs> to him. We're together. Like, yo, Snoop, you got it. So Snoop, like, I'm gonna come do it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So now I'm starting to rewrite everything for him. For for so it fits Snoop. Yes, but because I wanted like, because, yeah, man, look, because man, I wanted I it think to I'm not, come out there. And do I didn't it want it to be. I didn't want Snoop <laughs> to be Snoop. Right. And just so happily, man, Snoop ended up doing something where he, for the, these three days he could not be there. Yeah. And I was like, at the last the exact minute, three days, and exactly when he said I couldn't be there, the phone lit up, and it was Tip saying. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at God. Yep. Can we get a top bill and fan clap? That was that great, right man. That was hey, great. Hey, it was meant to be. You know the same thing happened to me on James Bond because what happened, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't make it. And then they picked the white guy. You know what I'm talking about? Man, no, never mind. Anyway, man. so uh, this Friday is very exciting for yes. you guys. Um, yeah. Dion, you are you are on a wave. You know what I'm saying? Joe, so it's the same. You guys got a great, great movie. Um, how are we going to keep putting out these kind of moves. I like it. I like these adventures. I like the thrillers. I like, you know, people like, oh my God. Like, I like those oh my God moments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By got- understanding, I'll just start it off by understanding okay. that independent filmmakers can make quality films. Yes. And uh, people like Dion um, uh, who want to elevate um you know, not obviously. I'm, 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 I'm as white as I'm almost translucent. Right, I'm right. shining on you. I'm your, I'm your bounce. Yeah, light. yeah. You're actually my, my light filter. There you right go. Now. But you know what I mean. But so not. But it's a yes and. It's it's everybody, and he wants to elevate everybody and people that aren't often don't get the initial go ahead from Hollywood. Dion says, why not? Yeah, and that and that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up about independent filmmaking because. A lot of times, a studio, we all want to work at a big studio, but you don't get a chance to do exactly what you want to do. We don't. The har- we don't. And, uh, you know, I watched a uh, very interesting show called The Offer, and it made me, it's, it's, it's a great, great show about how they made The Godfather and all the tough parts of it. Yeah. Most people don't know what it takes to make a film. No. They do not understand the process of being a producer, writing some something hoping people like it seeing your vision and actually getting it done i think what you're doing is brilliant because it's like it might be a smaller budget it might you know you might have to shoot it in utah save some money uh, or shoot it in you know uh, uh lake tahoe but you can do what you want to do absolutely it, yeah and and also and you trust your actors yeah and this and and look man this is i think what i'm representing right now is the new wave of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole mindset right now is there's no one that's better than us because your packaging is better than mine don't mean that you hotter or, 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 or do it better than me. Exactly. And, I'm, I'm, and I, I go back to sports. You know, when, when I was um, coming out of Indiana playing basketball, you know, I was a, I was a, I was a really good basketball player. Mm-hmm. And uh, but because I didn't come from a certain market, when they rolled the balls out in the big markets, and we had the guys that had the, the big names, yes, we ate their lunch. <laughs> Tore they ass right? Because the I'm like, you know, our feet through the through the shoes, it didn't matter. Right, you getting dunked on, you losing the night, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I, and then you gonna have to write my name down just by your name. So a little bit of this is the same energy that I'm having here, and what we've been able to do with people that support the energy, man, and we grow into brotherhood. Me and Joe have been in so much together, power, yeah. intruder, now this. Um, yeah, man, we're in a place where I'm going like, no, nah, man, you can go make your films and compete because that's exactly what they're doing. They're not doing anything different. And, oh, by the way, I'm looking at Bill Bellamy, and I'm going, why is it that 
we have to take Bill and place him over here. And we have to act like there's all these other hot guys. You are legendary. Thank you. Boy, listen, I'm telling you, you are, listen, you are team. legendary. Oh, shit. So a lot of. I a feel lot good of, right there, my spirit. Lot, yeah, but a lot of what we do out here, man, mm-hmm. is we replace us. But then on the other side of it in Hollywood, they can go get whoever they want and they rem- and give them an. I've just watched recently uh, Cameron Diaz, who ain't acted in the movie in 15 t- years. 15 years, just got. You know how much Netflix had to pay her? To just come back? Yeah, they, I, I think they got it. They okay. got it. Okay. <laughs> but it's a lot. But you already know what it is, right, right? Right, But name any black actress that ain't worked in 15 years. What? Can you name one that they would bring back and be like, we finna pay you and make? Not at all. Nah. Okay, so, so I look at that and I go like, no, man. The people that I'm putting in these films are prolific. The people I'm putting in these films are stars. We yes. still love them. Michael Ely's box office is bigger than anybody you could put in front of front of us right now, Megan and, Good. And always, right? always eat them so, up. Every time, yes, right? So to me, I'm going up. like, yo, so when you take The Intruder year, a couple years ago and you put it against Avengers Endgame on opening weekend, and then you have three other $50 million movies, and we beat all of them, and we're two to Endgame with an independent $3 million movie that we made. Come on, bro. And it does that for 14 weeks. Come on, bro. That's when I don't, I don't listen. You don't question. You don't listen. Yeah, I don't listen. You know what you're doing. When I take a Meet the Blacks <laughs> and I put it in the theater against Batman versus Superman and we open against that. I don't I don't even listen no more. Only thing I need to do is just tune up and get better and better and keep working my game. I, that's what I love. Uh, I love about this this vibe that you're on. Like, it is a wave and it's, 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 a, it's a tribute to hard work. It's a tribute to dreamers and visionaries, right? Yep. Because when you got a vision like you have or I had to get here and like Joseph had to become an actor and get his own series yes. like we had to see something first before everybody else right and I think what you're doing now for independent filmmakers is waking them up which is good because we yeah. need new energy in the game yeah. we need cast making movies we got the best cameras they got cameras now like your phone damn near is better than the camera yeah, you know what I'm is. saying and so like there's no excuse um, to not try that's what I'm saying it's no excuse not to try and yeah, Dion's putting yeah. his money where his mouth is yeah. because I was in Gary, Indiana when he received the key to the city for a program that he started for independent filmmakers and gave everybody a camera out of, out of the pocket. Just said, here, go make these go films make and, support, crazy, and supported man. that yeah, yeah. in Gary, Indiana. He brought it back home and said, you can do this. I was, it, was, it was incredibly touching, and it's, it's real. It's not just somebody preaching this. He's going out into the street, out into the world, out back to his old neighborhood, and saying, we, I did it. We could all do it, and spreading that love. It's, it, that's who I want to be around. I, I think that um, also, too, I want to give, uh, give you your flowers, how you are giving quality work to actors, where they are able to stretch out. They're able to, uh, you know, develop more on screen because that's all what we want to do. We yeah. always want the opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, myself included. It's just like getting getting a role that you just go, oh, my God, like, I love this one. This one right here, I'm going all out. I could, oh, I see myself doing this, that, and the other. But they come, like, once or twice a year. Like, they don't yeah. come, like, every five seconds, you yeah, know what I mean? Right. That's right. It's, it's, it's like... Good sex, you know, you get some, <laughs> but you want that, you want the mega. You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but, but yeah, but, but you want got, the mega. You guys got to remember, and I'm a, whatever camera this is, just every Your filmmaker. Your camera straight down every, the middle. Every filmmaker that's out there, just understand yes. you got to do the work though. Absolutely. So uh, we're not just seeing independent film, you just go pick up a camera and think you're going to be hot as a director. What happens is, what the challenge is that we have, or I have as a, as a, as a writer and a director and Roxanne, my partner as a producer, is the biggest thing you could have in film is time. Okay. That's where money comes from, right? So it's not that some of the directors are the greatest directors on earth. It's that some of the directors have seven months to shoot a movie. So if I could sit there, shoot a scene, go away, think about the scene come back, reshoot it, build it differently, and then I have the greatest editors, what am I, right? Now, this is why you also have great directors that have become pioneers in this space. So Michael Mann, Manhunter, 
Boom. You know, these are these are these are eight, nine day shoots that they already cut their teeth on. They proved he was doing the blood, he was doing the squibs, he was making a film from the dirt up. Thief Correct. too. I mean, thief, he did that thief you know what I mean? Michael so, Mann. Shout out to Michael Mann. Right, but but I'm saying there's, this is why some of these actors, Steven Spielberg, you know what I mean? John Singleton, Spike Lee, she's got to have it. Like, they went out there with nothing first and was like, let me show you what I can do. Correct. So a little bit of that is an independent spirit. So it's like playing ball, man. Like, you got to keep working on your craft. I don't think there's very many people that can make fear in 15 days when you see this movie. Dude, I was averaging <laughs> was 60. I was averaging, me and Chris Dusky was, I think, averaging 60 to 85 setups a day. Right? But that's because I know exactly where I need to be. I know exactly where he need to be because I can see the process already. Now, I'm not going to keep doing that because <laughs> it's right, hard, right? right. Like, you like, yo, I'm, 60, like, did you hear him say 65 setups in a day? For the people that are listening, 65 setups for a movie is crazy. Crazy. We are moving. We are shooting. We don't. I wish you would go to the bathroom. Okay? You better hold it. You better hold it. We going because we going to turn around and we we out of here. Like you moving. Oh no, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop shooting. In fact, I think just just not to talk about the power show, but when we did the finale of season one, uh-huh. Dion, did, we didn't power. have a finished script either. And everybody's like, oh, I don't know. And Diaz not going to be able I said, Diaz going to be just fine. <laughs> we'll he's be just, all right. He's yeah, just going to yeah. be fine. He's going to keep shooting. And the, our days... He just shot something. They're like, oh, well, we don't know where this scene's going. He goes, all right, well, set this up here. I'm going to shoot this over here. And just, you know, he just didn't stop. <laughs> no, because I, I, hey, I, I find I love that. that I find, attitude, no, though. No, because, That's dope. because you always, what, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a skill set. Like, okay. You got to be good on your feet. So you're like, okay, if I can't get the best independent filmmakers in the world is, oh, I've been planning all week to shoot right there. Okay. Okay. And then you come in to me right. We set up the, the cameras, and you go, "Hey, you can't shoot there no more." No so way. now what? So your job is a really good. It's a really good instrument for your brain to go. Okay. All right. How about here? But here and there. If you can't do that, you can't direct. To me. But you got to be nimble. Mm-hmm. Keep your, so, keep your so, head on a swivel. Keep yep. your knees bent. Yep. You got to be able to adjust. You know, like uh, I was shooting a scene. Um, for Bel Air, this was like a couple weeks ago. Bel Air, shout out to Ephraim, man. My brother's a writer on there, man. Ephraim. And, and shout out to Coop, man. Coop. Yo, and the sun. We was losing the sun. Yeah. We was losing the sun. My man said, we are good. He went and got that lightning thing. Boom, boom. He had a balloon. You, you yeah. ever seen the oh, balloon yeah, joint? Yeah, yeah. They had the helium. It was daytime for 25 more minutes. I was like, oh. <laughs> but but that's that's the beauty of what we do. You know what I mean? And 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 I'm really excited. I hope you know guys know who are listening and watch. I'm really sincere about this. I'm super excited. I always want underdogs to win. I always love the spirit of the independent. Like I think that this is going to be wonderful. And just keep banging them out for us though. Yep. Don't get don't get don't get your black card and then stop going to Macy's. No, man, like, we, yeah, we love it, man. We love it. <laughs> like we love, you know what I'm saying? We are working on some more stuff, man. No, yeah, this this is what it's it is. So man. wonderful, man. Turn up, turn them around, man. Make sure they're great. Make sure they mean something, man. So a long time from now, people will look back and understand every film we made was made for a reason. And right now we're starting to get to that point, man. Like I look at Black and Blue, and I remember I made that film before all the civil unrest. I was like, yo, I had an idea. Traffic, people frowned on that film. They was like, why they didn't believe it? They didn't believe it. I remember a critic had to write me a letter and tell me I apologize after bashing it because he was like, I didn't realize that you were (laughs) I said, man, the People that are being trafficked are right here in these urban neighborhoods. Right in front of you. It's, not, you? it's not always in Russia or, or China. Or, it is there. It's very, very much so there. But it's really right here in the hood. A girl getting pimped is trafficked. Yes, sir. Because they take a girl from, from, from Oakland and bring her to Reno. Then take her to the Super Bowl. Then take, she's being trafficked. So I said, man, this is what that movie was exploring was how it works that way. So that was a bit of ahead of its time. Supremacy with uh, Mahershala Ali and Danny Glover. Um, made that film with 16 millimeter film. Joe Anderson, a white uh, skinhead Nazi who, true story, gets that out movie of prison, was hard body. gets inside of a house and takes over a black film. These movies were before people wanted to even have those conversations. I know, man. So, it, this, this is the thing that I feel like is your signature. Like you're putting your stamp on an emotion and you're putting it in film. And I think that's beautiful if you can keep doing that because you each of your projects grab an emotion and you just. 
open it up so that we get to see visually what that emotion is. You yes. know what I mean? And that's why I think fear as a psychological thriller is going to work because it's like, yo, it's something we can all relate to. We can all Everybody, grab a, a, a teaspoon of it or maybe a tablespoon of it. And then you got all these different characters and we're going to find ourselves in each character. Yes, man. And if you, whatever the human brain can manifest becomes reality. That's the bottom line. So we can allow you to be Bill Bellamy with your own show on yes. Hollywood Boulevard with people walking <laughs> by seeing you. This is crazy. You could become Joe, who everybody is in love with. We can't go nowhere with him. He's power, <laughs> Ozark, fear, intruder, everything he's doing. Or it could kill you. Just, But you got to fight. You have to just understand I, I it's have, all here, I, man. Can I have Whatever a funny you... moment with Joseph real quick? Yeah, get it. Because so, Joseph, like, you know you my, mm-hmm. you my man, 50 Grand, love you to yeah. death. But, <laughs> Is it like... something with Gary Owen? You <laughs> no, 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 no. That was hysterical. <laughs> so we was, it's two, it's two things. So we were, uh, we were in Houston together, and it looked so real. Tarek, this is crazy. Like, so Gary Owen is on stage doing this stuff, and he's talking crazy about about Joseph, and he walks out, and it looks like they fight, but they look exactly the same. So you didn't know who was winning, right? It was crazy. It was so perfectly done, bro. Like, because I was like, yo, Joseph about to, like, really wear him out, right? So that's one. Other one was I really on power, right? Um, You know, Keisha. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's just talk about Keisha. Fringe benefits. Okay, I think you know what I'm saying. Oh, so th- this oh. is the thing that hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you, you and Keisha. You know, because I watch the show, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, man, he he about to take my girlfriend. Because you know, like when you watch TV shows, you be thinking like that, that might be your girlfriend. Like, like wait. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, yo, man, you know, he did. He, he loved it all. I, 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 you know. That's all right, She's man. She's beautiful, though, man. She's a yeah. beautiful person inside I, and out. Oh, yeah, Lala. yeah. I love her. I love Lala. Shout out to Lala. But when I was watching it, man, I was kind of hot. You know, I, I don't know if you watched Good Times back in the day, but. Of course. Anyway, uh, you know, there's a couple characters on certain shows that you just feel like, yo, that, you know, you know, that could have been me. Like, if I was in the streets back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could have pulled a girl like Keish. But he took her from me. But I was just saying. You were JJ rocking that cane? Or were you Michael? Is he, you were already mad at everybody. I was mad at everybody. Right, right. right. Bernadette, no, Bernadette, Bernadette was like one of my um, uh, first crushes. Yeah, sure. Bernadette Stannis was Stannis, beautiful. Yeah. Shockingly. But I always wanted to tease you about that because I was like, oh my God. Because you always have the finest sisters, you know what I'm saying? And in this movie, uh, again, a boom. Annie Alonso, beautiful woman. I mean. Great well, actor too. Wesley told me you got to put it in your contract. Because I don't know if y'all go back in Wesley Snipes' career. Uh <laughs> All his co-stars was bananas. I think he had it like in the, in the fine print. Bad, you get somebody bad. Bad chicks. You got the, ah, ah, she got to be bad to the motherfucker. That's is, it, man. Is that but, it? But shout out to shout out to Fifty, man. Like yeah, I, every time 50. I get an opportunity to just shout him out, man, mm. I, I have to because a lot of people look past uh, for whatever reason what he's built. And, oh my uh, god, I mean, it's, and, it's and, phenomenal. And he doesn't get enough credit to me, man. The fact that this dude 22 shows, he's 22 got 22 shows, shows, but at the same time, they made these shows that have beat every network television show for the last uh, damn near decade, yes, sir. And uh, he keeps growing them and keeps doing them. And it's just, I'm looking at this dude going, if he was anybody else. They would have already been like, he the new Dick Wolf. The you power show is so, the power show is second only to Game of Thrones. And, think, and about how, think of how many people don't even like. I remember when people would be like, "What you been doing for the past six years?" I'm like, "Power I'm working." And they're like, "Power," and they're like, "Oh, powers." I was like, "No, no, no I'm no, not wearing power. a cape." Work. It's a yeah. So and it's do it, it's and amazing. Doing it right, man. It, it, it always blew me away too. But think power, BMF. You know what I mean? I mean all of it, man. Raising Canaan like, for life. For life. Just think about just. I mean, and, and quality stuff. And telling these amazing stories. And, I, yeah. and and obviously, excuse me, and obviously 50 is independent to a degree as well. You yeah. know, he's outside of the, uh, you know, the studio mold. He uh, came in as an independent and said, I got this idea. And then somebody like Star said, oh, well, let's just see how it goes. A kaboom! <laughs> a kaboom! Man. Built a whole goddamn network by itself. Put him on their back. And then now they're acting funny. But whatever. You know, that's the game. Man. 
Well, gave us this this brother right here, man, who I absolutely thank love you. And we got Joseph. Yeah, we got Joseph, man. <laughs> Joseph, thank I'm you grateful, for grateful, thank grateful you. to be here. Believe me, just grateful, grateful to be here. Can we tell a quick story of the yeah. intruder of, of yeah. Omar Joseph? So Omar Joseph uh, said to Mark Berg, he said, "I got." They said they wanted a black comedic actor to right. be the best friend of uh, Michael Ely's character in The right. Intruder, and Omar Joseph, God love him, Brooklyn born and raised, says, "I got your black comedic actor, but he's a white dramatic actor." Now hold up, hear me out, <laughs> hear me out. Mark Berg says, I don't know this guy, never heard of him. He said, well, you got a son. He's uh, 17 years old or something. He said, I bet he watches Power. So you go home and you ask him who his favorite character is. Mark Berg apparently came back the next day and he goes, all right, how much is he going to (laughs) cost? That's true. That's a true story. Are you serious? But you, I mean, you got the goods, man. It is what it is, man. We, we, I'm all about, Wiz Khalifa said this on one of our interviews. He said, we are, should be in the era of celebrating each other to the fullest. Instead of being negative and finding something to say, let's celebrate each other to the fullest and push each other up. And that's what I'm doing with this. This is one of those times where we need to push each other up, celebrate it so we can keep continuing continuing to do that and go out and support everybody out there this weekend we got a killer movie for you fear joseph sakura we got ti we got king batch we got terrence j it's like it's like in a it's a hodgepodge of crazy and i'm just telling you (laughs) you you you, it's just a hodgepodge of crazy you ain't gonna know what to do with your goddamn self and it's gonna be (laughs) did i describe it just right (laughs) real quick real quick before we uh we get out of here on top billing we always have a segment called all facts so all facts is all about I ask you a question, you tell the truth. And you both get a question. All facts for you, Deion Taylor. You get five directors to be a part of your project, past, present, and future. You, all of y'all are going to collaborate on a project, but all of them have influenced you in some way, and you get an opportunity to work with your top five. Mm. It's kind of dope, right? That's that a good one. Good. That's a good one. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Uh, Who would they be? Damn, that's good. John Singleton, of course. Bam. Um, Michael Mann. Boom. Mmm. Spielberg. Oh, you got it. You gonna have the budget of life. Go ahead. Ridley, <laughs> Ridley Scott. <laughs> oh, you going in? You going in? He going in? And probably um, Sidney Poitier. Oh. They call me Mr. Tibbs. People don't know, man. Sidney <laughs> Poitier uh, directed Stir Crazy. Yeah. He was and the first black filmmaker to ever have a movie that made $100 million in the box office. He was the first? First. What? Yeah, I didn't know that either. Y'all remember Stir Crazy? I, oh, I, I remember saw Stir, Stir Crazy. Crazy. A lot of people, I tell people that Sidney Poitier directed Stir Crazy, they'd be like, what? Yeah. I, said, yeah, he I directed thought he directed Let's Do It Again. And, um, he did. It. Man, he was amazing. He was amazing as a filmmaker. Wow. And uh, just what what I loved about um, artists, I wish he would have done more films, but what was so great about him, if you think about the balance of Stir Crazy, was very serious, very funny, yeah. very canny, very outgoing, but it was grounded in something very ugly and real. And um, I just love that, man. I, as I, I, I really, really like him a lot as a filmmaker. And I just try to grab a little bit of that energy in what I do, like make sure it's in the real place. It's the same with... Um, John Singleton, man, just from a very real... Yeah, man. You're, you're, that's you're, what you're, he knew. Bro, your top billing top five is crazy. <laughs> There's nothing to talk about. It's undisputed. So, Joseph Secure, all facts. Uh-oh. All facts. Uh-oh. Hey, fellas, it's for all the players out there. Ooh. Yikes. All right. Here we go, oh, Joseph no. Secure. You get to pick your next five co-stars. Fine oh, as hell. Fine as hell. They got to be smoking hot. There's a lot of people out there look up to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the streets is waiting on this list. So they got. So you pick your top five co-stars. They could be in the future that you want to work with or somebody that you already like. L- ladies and gentlemen, on top billing. Let's bring Bert back Bernadette Stannis. Oh, yeah, you go old Let's school. Bring her back. Good times. Oh, you good he's, times. He's freaky. Um, uh, he, he freaky out there. <laughs> what though? Can, he going back to the old auntie. Okay, good. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> Aubrey. Yeah. Okay. Um, all, right, all, right, all right. I like I like you keeping it saucy. Oh God. Uh, Florence. Florence. I know. See, I said. I, I thought you said Florence from. Did you say Florence? Florence? 
<laughs> bring back flow. I, I know you bring back flow. <laughs> I'm bringing oh, bring back. I'm boy. not afraid. He not. A- <laughs> <laughs> he gonna get floors. Oh hell no! No, don't bring back floors. No, get, 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 you, you, get you. You get you something. Get you something. Get, get you something, man. You already did one throwback. Get you a new. Get you a new. Do I get? Do I get round two with Lala? Yeah, you got to have that. That's a reunion. That's a. That's that's. Must do. Okay, there's Lala makes the top five. We got uh, two more. Margot Robbie. Oh, man, you took her from me, man. <laughs> oh, she, she up there. I saw her, I just recently saw man. her in Babylon, and she was a little crazy. I was like, that's probably her real life. <laughs> like, you know that's what I mean? The, that's the one like that. That's, that's, that's the chick, yeah. That's the chick like you meet at the restaurant, everything could, and then you got doo-doo in your bed like in the hotel. You're like, you know what? <laughs> was that you or was that me? Yeah. <laughs> that was you. That was you. That was you. <laughs> And Jessica Chastain. Yo, you got a nice man. You got a nice. You went old school, new school. Yeah. I like it. Hey, man, I want to thank you guys both for coming uh, to Top Billing today. Chilling. You got some ladies out there. They just waving at y'all. So maybe, you know, they seen a movie already. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe, you know, you about to be on the next level, level, level. But uh, more importantly, I want to thank Dion Taylor, Joseph Shakur. You guys are Top Billing. You are part of our squad. Coach King in the game. Let it <laughs> Be known. Top billing, baby. Catch you on the next episode. All the way from Hollywood, California. Holla. How, we, how many minutes we hit them for? 47. Yeah. Yo, yo. I need you. I need you. Let's blow this movie up. Blockbuster. Fear. Psychological thriller. Up next. Let's go. Scary as. <laughs>